All right, how is everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. So uh, I'm at the gym again. Um, I'm in an LA Fitness, as you can tell. Um, so what I want to get into today very quickly is um, learning how to properly stretch and warm up. And I don't think a lot of people really know how to do this correctly. I know I didn't for many, many years. So I'm going to just start all the way in the back. When I was younger, I was actually extremely flexible. So just like a lot of people, I would stretch before I worked out. But a lot of times, I think I was actually stretching to the point where I was actually hurting my tendons and joints, kind of pushing things to the extreme and not actually uh, doing it properly. I didn't know how to do it better. It was, I'm going back to the 70s where, you know, you only saw books or magazines and you really didn't uh, see a lot of videos or things in that nature. What I'm trying to say here too is, so let's go back also to what I was bigger and heavier. Again, I was very flexible. I was actually like 230, 40, 50 pounds. And we used to have an eight foot ceiling uh, in our apartment complex. I was so flexible, I could literally jump up and kick it. I can bend down easily, bend down on my palms of my hand, touch the ground. Um, I could do so many things that I was, I'd go to literally a yoga class, a beginner's class. It was kind of a joke for me. That's how flexible I used to be. My oldest daughter is very flexible. So I felt when I was warming up a lot of times, again, um, I could just, I was doing it properly when I wasn't, but I'm here to tell you, please study how to stretch properly, especially different, depending now more than anything, depending on the exercises that you're doing, you really need to stretch and it's really about warming up. All right. You need to be properly warmed up, which I think this is where most people screw up. So if I go back to my mid twenties or even early twenties, I should say, when I started to follow Dorian Yates workout. I would read that he'd come in, I think he rode a bicycle for five minutes to warm up his knees, so I started to do that. But when he went to work out, he'd warm up his entire body if he was doing upper body. If he was doing legs, obviously he'd warm those up as well. But say for instance, he's doing chest, tries, back, whatever, buys. He would come in, I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to remember his workout, this goes back 25, 30 years. He would do, for instance, one chest, warm up, one try, one by, one back. I think he warmed up his shoulders, all these different things. So I started to do that, which I thought was amazing. I know it's a little time consuming. And back then I really didn't do abs till the end, which I've kind of flipped now. I kind of do them first, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but here's the thing regarding that. Um, that was great when I would do it when I was younger. I really didn't, that was all the warm up I really did. And then I would just jump right into what I was doing, which was fine. But as I started to get older, even in my 30s, uh, my buddy owns one of the largest boxing gyms in Chicago. I started to tell him, man, my elbows are destroyed or this isn't working or I get in there, it takes me so long to really get, you know, I was always a kind of a slow starter in a gym and as time went on, most people were getting fatigued. I kind of picked up momentum. And he used to tell me, you are not warmed up properly. All right, and I'm thinking, well, what are you talking about, man? I'm doing like, I warm up each body part. He's like, no, 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 you're still not warmed up. You need to really get that blood flow in your entire upper body. You may have to even do more than just what you're doing one per set. And I really realized because I tore my, tore my rotator's cuff years ago. And um, when I had that happen uh, for a couple months, I couldn't work out with weights really. Uh, my doctor gave me all these different types of workouts to do for my rotator's cuff. They were rubber band driven and even dumbbells. So I started to think about what he said. And the thing is, I think what happens with a lot of us is we get to the gym, we want to kick it in the ass. We don't want to waste too much time there. We only want to be there an hour and a half or whatever we want to be there. Um, but I really had to realize the more I started to warm up, the better I felt. And obviously I started to get older uh, when I started getting into my 40s. Now I'm heading into 50. I really wasn't as warmed up as I thought. So now a third of my workout is probably warming up. Uh, so I'll go in, regardless of what I'm doing throughout the day, I always try to warm up with a bike for five minutes. Just like I said, I still do that to get my knees warmed up. Regardless what I'm doing, sometimes I'll get on a treadmill. I may walk five, 10 minutes. I don't know. Sometimes even elliptical a little bit. But if I'm doing weight training, for instance, I'm going to do some stretching. Obviously, you know, all these different stretching movements that we do with our upper body. But I always now incorporate a hip. I do three different type of hip stretching movements. Because as I'm getting older, um, I realize my hips, you know, to a certain point, uh, you know, you start to feel differently and I see a lot of elderly people and they're having a lot of hip or knee issues. And you gotta be very careful when you're working out because the one thing you don't wanna do is obviously I said, the trick to working out for the long time, for the long game is not getting injured. One injury can set you back months, even years. You want to stay healthy. I think in my case, I was lifting heavy weights for a numerous amount of years. I wasn't necessarily helping myself. 
I may have been getting stronger, but I definitely was taking a toll on my joints, tendons, and muscles. Now that I'm older and I've lost some weight, uh, I could feel I feel much better. But I can still tell, especially in my leg area, because I squatted heavy weights, deadlifted heavy weights for numerous amount of years, and I'm not talking five or ten years. I'm talking 30, 40 years of weightlifting that has taken a toll even on my lower back and all these things. So the one thing I'd recommend to anybody is I understand we want to get stronger, bigger, faster. Uh, but here's the thing, just be careful you're not taking a toll because if you want your body to have longevity, the last thing you want to do is damage it. And I think a lot of times we don't realize we are damaging it. Uh, but back to my warming up. So I really do what I told you. Uh, and then I warm up my hips. I do three different movements. And then I go into a shoulder exercise uh, warm up. I warm it up five different movements. I know that sounds crazy. I do like a 10 count. So it'd be kind of like this. I can show you, I do like 10 of those. I do 10 of these. I kind of do 10 of these. Then I go long ways up here and then I just go straight. I alternate arms. I have to have those shoulders warmed up for me. I don't care what I'm doing. Now, if I'm doing legs, that's different. I don't do that that day. But even if I'm just doing cardio or I'm doing anything, I'm always warming my legs up. I'm always warming my shoulders up. And then I will go in usually and start off with either triceps or biceps because I want my arms warmed up. Sometimes I even have to do two triceps because it really starts to tighten up on me. I try, especially back here. I don't know why, um, but I'll do two triceps, one bicep, maybe two. Go do a back, uh, some type of back exercise. I switch it up all the time and I'll bench press maybe 135 for whatever, 30 times to warm up to get some some blood flow going in there. And now I'll start to feel like I'm warmed up and ready to go. And I know a lot of times people be like, holy shit, aren't you kind of fatigued after doing all that? You get used to it like anything else. I'm not gonna say it also doesn't take a toll on you as far as like being in the gym longer, but the more I warmed up, I realized over the years, the better I felt. Sometimes I'll even do some back. I do stretch, so let's jump back into that when I am stretching before I'm working out. Again, I'm warming up my hamstrings, my quads my tries, my buys. I'm doing a lot of stretching movements. I don't know if you ever had an opportunity to read the uh, Tom Brady book, which is TV 12. Amazing book on all the different things he does as well that he incorporates, uh, what's that, pliability, which is interesting because he uses a lot of different things that he only carries, I think, or has. But you can find a lot of that stuff in the gym as well. And it's really about getting that blood flow through your body to your heart, which is amazing. Oh yeah, after my workouts as well. So usually now, for the most part, I love steam rooms. Most people don't have steam rooms, but I'm usually in a sauna. I do at least 15 minutes. I don't usually like to go over that. Between 10 and 15, but I'm usually almost at the 15 mark. And a lot of times I even stretch in there. It kicks your ass, especially if it's hot, but man, you get the blood flow going. Also, a lot of times after my workouts, I swim. I can do up to 40 laps, depending. But here's the thing again, when I tell people warming up, working out, stretching, make sure you do what you want to do. You love doing what you're doing. You're not going to stick with it. So take swimming. I swam my whole life for many, many years. I started to really get aggravated with it. I loved it, but I, on top of the water, it just started to take you know, the strokes on my shoulder. So I basically went to um, strictly underwater swimming, just doing laps back and forth. I actually got that off of, um, what's that famous chess player I saw a documentary on him? Um, Bobby Fischer. So Bobby Fischer started to learn when he was working out how much better shape he was than uh, the people he was playing against and a lot of it was breathing so he started to hold his breath for long periods of time and he just started to swim underwater and I, I promise you if you start you to do 10 laps 15 laps start doing some type of swimming it's the most amazing exercise I wouldn't do it it never worked for me before I used to my father had a big beautiful pool sometimes I'd swim and then go to the gym I don't know what it was but I get fatigued and I would be exhausted so I definitely save it towards the end of my workouts uh, I never do a jacuzzi unless it's an uh, basically a cardio day and I always do that, or it's a just a day off. I come in and I'll just do the sauna, jacuzzi, because I don't know, another thing that just breaks me down, it just fatigues me. The sauna, obviously, jacuzzi, and swimming kicks my ass. So, um, oh yeah, the one last thing I would incorporate is abs. So as I got older, the one thing I kind of neglected, I'd say more than anything, is I got bigger and stronger was my abs. Uh, most of my friends were all caught up in the abs, especially in the 80s and 90s, and even 2000s, and all, uh, of all times. I just wasn't into it. I have a big scar on my stomach from when I was a child. Uh, I pulled a uh, hot curling rollers when I was a baby on my stomach, so I had a pretty decent sized scar on my stomach. So it was weird when I'd get abs, it almost looked more disorientated. It looks weird, even worse. Not that it looks horrible, I could care less. But 
Um, I was really never caught up with my abs. That's why I never got caught up with thinking about being a bodybuilder. Plus, after wrestling for so many years, I never wanted to lose weight. So I definitely wasn't going to go into bodybuilding. But I wasn't caught up in abs. It wasn't an insecurity I had. But as I got older, I just wanted to make sure my core, because my cousin Joey owns a Pilates. His wife does. A big Pilates uh, school franchise. And he used to say, man, you got it all but your abs. <laughs> Every time we go do something, I'm like, oh, I don't give a shit. He's like, as you get older, you better kick it in the ass and start working on that. It's going to be very important. And he was right. So I started to incorporate abs. And what I do now is I do it at the beginning of my workout. And again, a lot of people say, are you crazy? You warm up for, say, 20, 25 minutes, and now you're doing abs first. By the time you get into your body part, you got to be just rocked, right? You're already kind of 35, 40 minutes in. The truth is you get used to it. Right, But I'm concentrating on the areas that I need to make sure that I'm healthy for long term. I mean, how much bigger do I really want my arms? You know, how, how much bigger do I really need my chest? How much wider do I need to be at my age? Um, I had to really get over a lot of those insecurities. What I really want to do is remove the fat off of my body as much as I could. Because the more I removed it, the better I felt, right? Just like anything else. So back to abs, uh, I alternated. I never do the same ab workout, but I try to do at least six, sometimes up to eight. Don't get me wrong, sometimes if I'm not feeling it, I just wanna jump into the weights, I do that. But for the most part, probably at least three times a week, I'm hitting abs first. I'm not saving it to the end like I know everybody else, and like uh, myself included for years, if I did them, I would wait till the end to do that. Uh, But a lot of times I would not do them, or I would rush through them, or I was fried because I would hit weights so intensely a lot of times that I was just fried. My, I had so much blood kind of flowing, especially if I did legs. Well, I don't always do legs with, uh, when I would do abs, but for the most part, even my upper body, I could, I could barely move my body a lot of times. But when after I warm up, I realized and stretched is when I kind of felt the most loose. So when I was doing abs, I had the most fluency, right? And you, you gotta really, and I'm gonna tell people, you need to figure out what's best for you, what's stretching uh, pre-workout, obviously during workout and then after because you're doing this to feel good right i understand we want to beat the shit out of ourselves to get the results we want but if you're not feeling good before you're about to work out while you're working out definitely after you're working out you're not going to stick to working out and there's a lot of different things like i was just saying even in swimming um what's that nancy kerrigan i took her after she got damaged um her knee after it got hit i think that's that professional ice skater I watched a documentary on her and saw all these different routines she was doing in the pool, and then I got exhausted from swimming sometimes. Even underwater would get boring. I started doing all these different things. I'd be doing lunges in the pool. I would be doing hop skips. I would be jumping sideways, back and forth. I'd be going running backwards, running forward in the pool. And after I did these things, I felt amazing. In the pool, I think the buoyancy for working out overall is the best, especially after a workout or just a workout in general, the buoyancy of you not having all that weight on your joints and tendons, and you can fluently move. You could do a lot of different things. Really try, and I tell everyone, they always ask me, Rich, what would you recommend for working out? And I'm like, swim. Just keep swimming. If you wanna lose weight, swim. Be consistent with it, right? Um, don't always get ca- get caught up where you have to do laps either, like everybody else has done them. No, go underwater. You can run in water. You can jump in water. Have some fun in there. It's going to give you a lot of different stimulation you never probably had before. It actually, if you keep swimming, like you'll be shocked when you get out of a pool. You'll almost get like a, a rush. So, anyways, I threw that in there. But yeah, so you need to figure out what works best for you. Obviously, there's Instagram. There is YouTube. There's magazines now. There is everything out there. See kind of what body you want to, you know, kind of go after. You got to have some type of goal. And me, I call it Michelangelo, uh, where you kind of, you know, you sculpt your body into what you want to create, especially in, if you want to become something very physical as far as running marathons, triathletes, uh, going to Tough Mudders, or whatever you want to do. Start researching what those guys or women do and, you know, watch videos on them. And it's only going to help you and really be a little knowledgeable about what your body style is and what your capabilities are for certain, you know, to really figure that out is what I should say. If you're six foot five, the guy who works out that's five foot six is going to have a whole different type of probably workout than you because genetically it's just entirely different. Not saying you can't work out like that person, but try to find somebody who has a very style uh, genetics, I should say, and something you're going after to pursue. And that could go for bodybuilding, powerlifting, or anything. All that knowledge is just going to you know, 
come to you, spend some more time. Instead of being on social media, sometimes wasting your time or watching a lot of bullshit on TV, you could be watching videos. And every video I watch, even nowadays, as much as I've been lifting basically since I was five years old, but I've been serious since I was 12, I'm constantly learning new things. Things are constantly coming out. So really be aware of that and be willing to make changes and not get caught up in what I call a rut or doing the same type of workouts, the same type of warm up, which probably worked for you at the beginning, but you may want to really start incorporating different types of workouts. All right. All right. Uh, I do another podcast and I did a video on that as well. It's called Don't Get Into a Rut. And uh, I try to tell people every time they come into a gym after a while, try something new, try different equipment, try different exercises, try different workouts, try different, um, different gyms, try everything different. Keep, keep doing, uh, keep testing yourself. Uh, I think a lot of people get afraid that they're gonna lose something if they try something different, if they're kinda where they wanna be, but that's not the case. Uh, and if you're definitely falling into a rut where you're not getting any more results, you definitely need to make changes. You're kind of in that insane loop. You keep doing the same thing over and over again and you're not getting the results you want. You need to learn to break out of that, especially if trainers taught you certain things or you think uh, this is the only thing that ever could work for me. Break out of that. There's thousands of different exercises obviously out there, hundreds of different types of equipment, uh, just with dumbbells, free weights, all these different things. You could do so many different things, it, it could go on forever. All right, you just gotta be a little more open-minded and be creative and figure out what you really wanna get out of this workout. So, all right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Uh, if you get a chance, subscribe to my channel. And um, I have a Mastering Self-Confidence program out there. It's actually to help men find the women or woman of their dreams. I talk a lot about fitness, hygiene, fashion. Uh, I also have a podcast called The Rich... Chalenza Show, WTF, WTF are you talking about? Which basically you can figure that one out. And um, yeah, I'm always trying to help people. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I wish you nothing but the best. Take care.